Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 3 in PySpark playlist. In the previous two videos, we have learned about the introduction to PySpark and also we have understood what is an RDD. So RDD is basically resilient distributed data set and we understood that while creating an RDD, the data gets distributed into multiple partitions and these are by default created by the Spark cluster. But if we want to explicitly get control over the number of partitions or if we want to change or modify the number of partitions which is created by the Spark by default, then we can use something called partitioning on top of the RDDs. So how we can do that we will see in this video. So basically there are two ways in which we can partition our RDD. The first way is to partition the data while we create the RDD and the second way is to partition the data on top of an existing RDD. So we will see everything practically with the help of a demo. So let me go to Synapse Notebook and here let's try to create a new code cell. So here first of all let's try to create a new RDD. So here let me create RDD1 with the help of Spark context method present in the Spark module. We have already talked about it in the previous video. So here I am going to create the RDD by using sc.parallelize function and I am going to give the data starting from 1 and let me go to say uh, let me go till 12 okay and now if we want to see that how many partitions it will create while creating this RDD then we can use something called get num partitions okay so this function will help us to get the number of partitions that the spark cluster will create on this rdd okay now we might have a question in our mind that why it is giving eight partitions when the total number of data is 12 how is it related to the number eight and does it always create eight partitions irrespective of the number of data present in the data set let's try to figure that out as well so instead of hard coding the values, I'm going to use a range function, which is basically going to do the similar job. So let me give the number from 1 till 101. So now by using range of 1 comma 101, it will create the RDD starting from 1 till 100 number. Okay. So let's try to see the data as well. RDD1 dot collect. RDD1 dot collect and with the help of collect function we will try to print the data present in the RDD here okay and then we will see if the number of partitions is still 8 or it gets increased since the number of range we are increasing okay so you can see the notebook got executed and this is the RDD which is having the data starting from 1 till 100 and still the number of partitions is 8. So we understood that irrespective of the number of data present in our data set, it is creating 8 partitions. So now let's try to see why it's creating 8 partitions. So in Spark, there is something called default parallelism. Okay. And if I try to run this, you can see by default, it is going to create 8 partitions because somehow the Spark configuration present in my Spark pool is allowing it to create 8 partitions based on the number of B cores and the total number of resources it allocates in the backend to run our application. So somehow these Spark configurations is leading to the default partition number as 8. Okay, so let's go back and here. So you understood that by default it is going to create 8 number of partitions. But now if we want to change the number of partitions explicitly, then there are two ways as I mentioned earlier. So first way is while creating the RDD, we can specify the number of partitions as a parameter. Okay. So let's try to see how we can do that. So here while creating the RDD, we are using parallelize method and in this method, the first argument or the first parameter is nothing but the range function or else you can instead of using range function, you can define the whole data set like this. You can do the hard coding as well. So to explicitly distribute the data into the desired number of partitions, we can use a second parameter here by defining the desired number of partition here. 
so suppose instead of 8 which is the default partition number I want to distribute the data into 10 different partitions so I need to give a comma and then specify the number of partitions that we want so if I run this instead of 8 we are expecting 10 so you can see uh, the entire data set is distributed into 10 different uh, partitions okay so how we can see that how this data got distributed is it evenly distributed as 10 numbers in each of the files in each of the partitions or is it different so to validate that what we can do is we can use two methods first one is to create or load this rdd into some partition files so how we can do that there is something called save as text file method okay using this method we can load the rdd into partition files and the number of files that it will generate will be equal to the number of partition that we have specifically given so here in our case it will be 10 so here we need to specify the path so let me create a temporary folder inside my adls gen2 account in the root folder it will create because we have given a backslash and inside the root folder i will create a subfolder called temp uh, partition files okay now let's try to run this then we will see if it is evenly distributing the data into 10 number of files or, or not so let's go to uh, the storage account and inside my container you can see the temporary folder has been created inside this there is a subfolder called partition files this is the same name that we have specified here and inside this partition files you can see the number of part files are there there starting from 0 till 9 so it means it has created total 10 partition files which is part files okay if i try to view the data inside this so you can see for the first file it has given 10 number of data from 1 to 10 okay and let's try to see the second one okay so it is evenly distributing the data as a set of 10 numbers okay so you can see each of the files is containing 10 10 rows okay let's try this last file is having the number from 91 till 100 so it is evenly distributing the data in each of the partition files now instead of creating the part files how we can see the data got distributed directly in the notebook is let me comment this so here in rdd there is something called glom function and in this function let me use the collect method okay by using this we will see how the data is getting distributed so right now our data set is having 1 till 100 data and we are distributing it in 10 different part files and if we see here till this point it is showing the rdd files and after that you can see how the uh, part files or partitions are getting created so each of the partition is having 10 uh, data okay starting from 1 till 10 then 11 till 20 then 21 30 and so on okay so this is how we can see how the data got distributed or partition uh, inside the notebook itself instead of creating the partition files now we have seen how to explicitly define the partition while creating the rdd okay so we just need to specify the number of partition as the parameter as we have done here and then it will automatically change the number of partition from the default partition to the specified number so earlier it was 8 which was the default partition number for for our spark configuration but then we changed it to 10 while creating the rdd itself now the second way is to create the partition on top of an existing rdd by the help of repartition function or police function and we will see the difference between the two as well so first of all let me create a new cell here let me delete this one and we already have one rdd which is rdd1 so let me hide this output okay so on top of this rdd1 we are going to create another rdd rdd2 and while creating the rdd2 we will redistribute the data and we will change the number of partition so first of all let's try to use the first function which is repartition function and let's try to go through the description first 
So repartition function adjusts the number of partition by redistributing the data across the specified number of partitions. Okay. So let's try to create RDD2 on top of RDD1. So RDD1 dot let's try to use repartition function and inside this function we need to provide the desired number of partition as the parameter value. So here uh, earlier it was 10 for RDD1 we have specified 10 as the number of partition. Let's try to repartition it as 20. So now we want uh, 20 number of partition for the range of 1 to 100. So it should create 20 partitions and we will see that it equally distributes the data as 5 data in each of the files or not. Okay. And then let's try to print this RDD value. Let's use collect function. And also let's try to see the number of partitions. As we are specifying 20, so we are expecting that it will create 20 partitions. And also let's try to use both of these so that we will try to validate if the data is evenly distributed as 5 rows in each of the partitions or not because we are creating 20. So 20 into 5 is 100. So with the help of glom.collect we will be able to see uh, the output in the notebook itself. So instead of RDD1 let's try to give RDD2 here and instead of this path uh, here we already have files in partition files subfolder. So let me create another file called uh, repartition because we are using repartition function. So inside the temporary folder uh, we already have partition files named subfolder and here we are going to use repartition repartitioned files. Okay. And let's try to run this cell. Okay, so now the changes what you can see is as we expected by using repartition function it is reshuffling the data. The entire data has been reshuffled again and then the partitioning is done based on the number. So it will it is going to create 20 different partitions and you can see the first partition that it created is 71 to 100 and then there is nothing in the second partition, nothing in third partition and then from 11 to 20. So basically it is randomly distributing the data by reshuffling the entire data set and it's creating 20 uh, files okay, or 20 partitions. So let's try to validate the same thing here. Let's refresh it and here you can see uh, the repartition files and if we try to see the number of files it's 20 and you can see first file has nothing, second file is having 20, uh, 71 to 80 numbers, okay, third file is having nothing. So basically it is reshuffling the data and randomly creating the data set, okay. So basically by reshuffling the data, it has changed the sequence of the entire data set. Earlier it was, if we see the output. Earlier it was in the same sequence as expected but now the sequence has changed by using the repartition function. Okay. Now the second function is collage function. Uh, you might have heard of this collage word in SQL as well where in SQL collage used to fetch out the first not null value but please don't con confuse with the collage functionality in SQL with PySpy because the functionality here, here is uh, different. It is not going to give the first not null value. Basically, it is going to reduce the number of partition without shuffling the data. So the difference between repartition function and collage function is repartition command will redistribute the data by shuffling the entire data set. But collage function will try to merge the existing partition and try to reduce the number of partition without reshuffling the data. Okay. So basically whenever we try to reduce the number of partition, then we usually use collage function. But if we just try to change the number of partition, 
and if we do not care about the sequence of the data then we can go for repartition okay so let's go back and here let me copy this uh, entire code and let me go down and let me create a new cell here and this time we will create rdd3 on top of rdd1 which is fine and and instead of repartition we will use collage function okay and instead of 20 let's try to give uh, the partition number as 2 so basically entire data from 1 till 100 it should uh, convert into only two partition which is 1 to 50 and 50 to 100 if it is going to evenly distribute the data okay so we will see that and instead of this file name let me give the uh, folder name as collage files okay and now let's try to run the cell okay so you can see this is the uh, output for this print which is basically printing the rdd and then it has not returned the output for get num partition which it should have returned as 2 so we'll, we will investigate that further but after that you can see the data distribution output is here so you can see inside one array there is another nested array so basically this is partition 1 so from 1 till let me go down till 50 this is the first partition and then from 50 first to 100 it is the second partition so basically it is evenly distributing the data into two partitions starting from 1 to 50 and then 50 to 51 to 100 evenly into two different files so let's validate the same thing using the temporary files so you can see collage files named subfolder is created and inside this only two partition files are present and if we try to validate uh, so it's basically the same thing from 1 to 50 and then in the second file it has created the second file with the data from 51st uh, value to 100 okay so with the help of colleagues we understood that it is not shuffling the data the sequence of the data is same and it's helping us to reduce the number of partition but we got this error in getnum function uh, let me first comment this and here uh, why we got this error is because we missed the bracket for this function let me rerun it and here you see the output for this get num partition function is 2 because th that's what we specified for the number of partition okay so let's go back here and we understood what is the difference between repartition and collage so let's try to theoretically understand the difference between the two so by description repartition adjusts the number of partition by reshuffling the data and collage function is used to reduce the number of partition without shuffling the data it basically merges the existing partitions and uh, in repartition of course it will full shuffle the entire data set and in collage it will not do the full shuffling and repartition is expensive as if you imagine for a la large number of data set it involves the full shuffle of data and it may take more time and cost because it does the shuffling of the data but on the other hand collage function is less expensive as compared to repartitioning because it minimizes the data movement and it combines the partition whenever it is possible regarding data movement repartitioning distributes the data across the entire partition uh, and it potentially balances the partition size and in collage function it may result into imbalanced partition size when the repartition and collage function are used basically the repartition function is used when we want to change the number of partition and we want to evenly distribute the data and if we are not much bothered about the sequence of the data and the cost it incurs but if we are bothered about the cost and if we want to have the same sequence as expected then we can go for collage function if we want to reduce the number of partitions so that's it for this video guys i hope you find this video helpful please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it thank you